Ladies and gentlemen, it is fantastic to have you here because on today's episode, we are gonna be forging a knight on the highest peak of one of our local mountain ranges. It is a pleasure to have you here. Today's sponsor is NordVPN. It's a virtual private network service all about keeping you safe while it is that you're on the internet. At the end of the video, be sure to hit the link in the description, nordvpn.com forward slash forge to get yourself 75% off a three year plan as well as an extra month for free using coupon forge. Let's jump into it. So the goal is to forge a knife on a mountain top. Now, what is that gonna require? It's gonna require that we have a forge, it's gonna require that we have an anvil, a hammer, and it's gonna require that we can lug it to a mountain top, to 9,650 feet. It's a long way up. Anvils are typically heavy. This anvil here weighs about 110, 120 pounds. So that is why, a little while ago, we made ourselves a titanium anvil. An ultralight titanium anvil, perfect for shoving in somebody's backpack and sticking inside the dirt on a mountain top. Titanium anvil, we got that. Hammer's easy peasy, not too much of a big deal to worry about carrying up a two and a half pound hammer up the mountainside. Forge, that's not gonna be so easy because this thing weighs like 200 pounds. So that is where a can of tomato juice comes in. Not because I want to debate the differences between tomato and tomato, but because this is a round metallic container that is gonna be our forge. So let's get into it. So what it is that I have done, sorry to skip through so fast, is I have taken some ceramic fiber KO wool. Now, it's, it's a kind of dangerous material to work with, so of course I made sure that I had respiratory protection on, did as much work with it outside, and we use that as the key insulating um, part of this very small and lightweight forge. The benefit to using that ceramic wool is extremely lightweight, and it insulates better than just about anything. Cancer, however, is the downside, which is why I then took some satanite, which is a refractory material that you can really mix into you know, a very liquidy paste that I was then able to smear on the inside of the forge. I completely sealed up the KO wool. I allowed there to be a little bit of a hole for our map gas torch to come through, and that is just how simple building a forge is. All you gotta do is insulate the heat, have a heat source, and you're off to the races. One thing to note is a little after that footage was shot, Will welded on some legs to it. He did this as an extra security method just to make sure that it sat nice and stable. But the forge 
works. Forge works. It heats steel. It is phenomenal that with so little effort and so little expense, you can start forging. It's that simple. Little map gas torch, and you're forging a hot steel. Now, though it is phenomenal that the soup can forge works, I've got bad news. As you know, our intent was not just to create a soup can forge. Our intent was to create a soup can forge and go up onto a mountain and forge a knife. We were all packed and ready. The beginning of this video making a soup can forge, it was like the day before we were gonna go. We're all packed and ready. I had packed up my rucksack. I am ready to go. It's 9.30, I'm about to hop into bed and I think to myself, you know what? Just wanna double check. Can you do commercial activity on national forest land? So I Google and there's a resounding no, you can't. So going and making this whole video for the purpose of business of going and uh, hiking up to a mountain and forging a knife. That was a no-go, but I found that you could apply for a permit to do it, and so we applied for a permit. Contacted the rangers, and uh, there was a bunch of back and forth. We had to create uh, you know, an application to let them know exactly what we're gonna do. We had to show them how the setup was gonna look, and we can't go and forge a knife on National Forest Land, sadly, because they don't want us encouraging people to forge in National Forest. It makes sense. I can understand the prerogative, because though, of course, we wouldn't be doing this near any sort of forest, na it is National Forest Land, it's, it, it, it could be seen as an encouragement for, for lighting fires and creating forest fires. I can understand it, so it's a shame but it's not the end of the world. We still got to make ourselves a cool soup can of forge. It's just a shame we can't bring you guys, the cameras and the forge, along with us. Regardless, it's been a thrill bringing you along with this journey. I'm sorry we can't do it now. Maybe we'll find some solutions in the future for doing, uh, for doing something similar, something cool. Maybe there's something we can do up on a mountain that doesn't involve fire, or maybe there's a mountain we can go to that involves fire and not burning it down. Either way, thank you guys for joining us on this video before we finish it. Let's thank today's sponsor. Today's sponsor has been NordVPN, and while we can't go up on a mountain to tell you about NordVPN, we can tell you about NordVPN using Google Earth. Welcome to Google Earth. We have ourselves a beautiful little mountain range to look at. And we're gonna use this to create an analogy for how a virtual private network works. So say, you are Fan Mountain. Well, say you're on top of Fan Mountain, and you want to go ahead and access data from the website that is the Gallatin Peak. When you're using the internet normally, your stream of data, which is requesting information from the Gallatin Peak website, and is then sending back information to you, flows uninterrupted. Until the terrifying Lone Mountain hacker decides he wants to step in and intercept that stream of information, getting access to all the data that you're sharing between you and Gallatin Peak website. This is where Nord comes in. Instead of you communicating directly with the website you're trying to reach, you now communicate via NordVPN, who is encrypting the data all the way between you and them. This encrypted channel means it is so much more difficult to get hacked. What NordVPN also does, which is phenomenal, is it allows you to choose exactly where in the world you want the website to think you're browsing from. Nord has 5,724 servers in 60 countries, meaning that you can choose exactly which server you want to interact with. That server then interacts with the website on your behalf. It's all encrypted and all very intuitively controlled via the handy dandy app available for iOS, Android, Mac, and PC. You can have up to six simultaneous connections at once with Nord, which means that you and your family members can enjoy the safety and security of Nord. Thank you. Nord for sponsoring this video. Be sure to get yourself 75% off a three-year plan at nordvpn.com forward slash forge. You get an extra month for free using coupon code forge. I am sad we weren't able to make it up a mountain, but you know, we'll find a way to take you on some cool adventures in the future. 
what I am excited for is that I really, really hope you've been inspired by seeing how easy it is to build a forge. You can start bladesmithing, start blacksmithing so easily because that little soup can forge didn't take very long and it did not require complex tools. In fact, that's the first forge that I started off with, funnily enough, uh, almost that exact, exact same forge really really cool. Uh, I was able to heat treat out of it, I could do a little bit of forging. I made my own mocha megani out of it which is the copper and nickel Damascus using quarters. So you can, there's a lot you can do with those little forges. It's a, it's a capable thing. They really are and they're, they're cheap to make. You can do it for 50 bucks. It's crazy. Um, if you crazy. include the burner with it too. So You know you started with the little, little soup can forge. I started with the charcoal forge. It was a hole in the ground with some charcoal. Yeah. You know, no, some bricks and some charcoal. You can get into this stuff way easier than you think. You don't have to have this ridiculous monstrosity of an expensive workshop. It, the, the monstrosity of a workshop is, is fun, though. It, the monstrosity of the workshop is fun, but you can still have a whole lot of it without needing to do this. So I really hope you guys get out there. You go, you make something, you start enjoying the creative... You spill a little coffee. There's a hole in my lip. Oh, <laughs> whoops. Go enjoy the creative process, because it's a whole ton of fun. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.